Welcome to another session of personal finance training. Today we'll be looking at wealth yesterday versus today. This is presented by accounting lecturer. So by the end of the session, we'll look at wealth over the years in terms of household income. We're going to be looking at it in terms of the various years. So we're going to start in the 1930s and increment by 30 years over the period. So 1930s, 1960s, the 1990s, and then the 2020, and then we'll conclude. Now let's start in the 1930s. So we're looking at this information in terms of the United States. So in the 1930s, the average income was 1000 970 for the year and the average cost of rent is $18 per month loaf of bread was about 8 cents a dozen egg was 18 cents three uh, cabbage was 3 cents banana 19 sugar was 49 mattress 15 that's an outlier because you wouldn't buy a mattress every month but let's just say um, if you buy month one you buy a mattress is $15 and then um, the gallon of gas is 10 cents Altogether, that works out to be um, $35, um, $35 altogether, which if you multiply that for the month, for the year, well, that works out to be $420.60. So that's about 25% of one's income is spent, um, of the 1970 25% would have been spent on living related costs now there this could go up or, or down based on family situation maybe if there are three kids two kids one it depends on the family dynamic but it shows us that there's a huge disposable um, that one could have in the 1930s if one has a job that pays 1970 per year now we also need to take into account that the fact that over that period the great depression took place so there was high unemployment so Though there was a high disposable if you were in work, if you'd never had anything, um, you would you would be suffering quite severely uh, as well. So the 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 lack of jobs made it challenging. But once you had a job, you had um, a relatively good um, standard of living. Now in the 1960s, the average cost of a home is eleven thousand nine hundred. The the income per year in the 1960s was average income per year was four thousand three hundred and uh ninety four thousand three hundred and ninety six loaf of bread was 22 cents education now we're seeing college education come coming on board and that's 1450 a dozen egg was 55 cents cereal is 26 toothpaste 50 movie ticket is 85 gallon of gas is one dollar and four cents so the total there is 1,453. The difference there would be um, uh, 2,942.58. Um, so yeah, there is, um, so on average, I would say also good disposable, disposable of about 245.22. So again, in the 1960s, average family was living Providing you're in, in a job, your overheads was not significant and you could live relatively good, um, pay your bills and have cash to be able to save. Again, this is a, a f also could be a function of family dynamics. If you have a lot of kids, um, two, three, four kids, and in most instances in the 1960s, families tend to be much larger than they are today. But it doesn't negate the fact that your ability to have disposable providing you were an average family or or thereabouts would be quite high in the 1960s now let's have a look at the 90s the average um, household income or income you know let's say if one person is working uh, would be about 28,960 I mean this could double if the there are more than one person. Rent was now um, 465. A gallon of gas is $1.34. We see a gallon of gas is not necessarily changing significantly. The previous period was $1. Now it's $1.34, so it's marginal. But a house prices has gone up, skyrocketed to 123000 
So I would say in the 1930s it would have been about I say 2000 so your your yearly income would actually allow you to buy a property outright but now 28,000 and house price are 123 that means that's what about four years um, of your average of your of your income um, and yeah so it's uh, there's a the house price is actually causing um, the you know financial situation to be a bit unaffordable now let's have a look at what happens today so in in terms of today we can see um milk is 84 a loaf of bread two dollars seventy rice four dollars you know, cheese ten dollars you know um we can see double figures for living expenses a bottle of wine twelve dollars etc so quite high prices i mean your your shopping is looking at hundreds of dollars in terms of today um but what is in, important to note here is that in terms of living now let's say uh an average uh household income is about three thousand three hundred and sixteen and an apartment with three bedroom is, is two thousand uh two hundred and eight fifty five that's about sixty seven percent now, 67% of your income is being spent on living and rent. That's a huge percent. It leaves only 33% uh, for you to, to survive on. And with high food prices, you know, we're looking at, instead of disposable, we are looking at negative, which means that you would need to have other additional sources of finances to live. And then, uh, or several jobs. Um, and then we look at... Um, if you were to look at you know um, other places like in the city rent is 2848 again that's 85 percent of one's income now this gives us a very very challenging situation it gives you only 15 percent to live off um it means then people have to live together and that means they have to get on and um, and that could be very very challenging because there are a lot of dynamics if you lose your job then it affects the the living situation it creates problems it, you know the family dynamic then becomes uh, a bit of a, of a of a challenge there so when um, when the basic living of housing becomes so expensive especially in cities this creates a big problem so in terms of the wealth um, issue I would say from the figures it looks like we're poorer today than let's say in the 1930s now in recent times the interest rate especially in the UK has fallen to um, it has been announced that it will fall to 0 0.25 this is going to increase inflation which means that because money is cheaper it's going to cause an increase in inflation which means price is going to go up even further higher prices in housing because once mortgages are more affordable then allow uh, causes people to buy more which means that um house prices are going to go up which means rents are going to go up and that is going to even cause um a, a even further squeeze um you're going to have less disposable income um and also we would have relationship breakdown due to the fact that costs are so high you're not able to have as many kids as you would like you know um so the whole operational cost is quite high so therefore it becomes a challenge this is more likely going to cause divorce and family breakdown and all the other issues so i would say as time has has progressed we are able to afford much more because there are several means of getting um, additional me methods of financing but it doesn't mean that we're wealthier um, over time so to conclude we say in the 1930s barring the fact that in that period there was a great depression which means that a lot of unemployment but once you had a job you had very good disposable in the 1960s good disposable as well um, we educational cost was coming on board there but um, still you were able to buy a property easily in the 1990s again we, we're now having a gap between the the income and the property prices which then cause um, you know a significant squeeze on um, living standards and today we can see again a major squeeze huge proportion of income is being spent on rent and living related costs and therefore becomes more difficult to survive 
So, um, so I, I think it's more challenging today. We are less from this information. We are not wealthier today than in the past. I don't know what you think. You can share what you think, but like, share, subscribe. Thank you.